Welcome back to the Playwright Anti-Pattern Series, ever frustrated by random test failures that leave you scratching your head. Today's episode tackles the culprit behind many mysterious failures, locators. Let's crack the code on writing rock-solid locators that keep your tests stable. Let's face it, XBaths are like the duct tape of web testing. They might get the job done for a scraper, but they're a mess for reliable tests. Same goes for super long CSS chains. Why? Because they're too tied to the internal structure of the page. One tiny HTML change and boom, your tests break. Long XBath or CSS chains are more suitable for web scrapers who deal with static, released sites, not for professional test automation specialists working in an agile environment with frequent updates. Consider this XBath example. See how long that is. Any change to the HTML would break the locator and a CSS locator isn't much better. As a tester, your focus should be on testing visible behavior that users interact with on the screen, not on internal implementation details like HTML or CSS structures. Some argue that XBath engines work differently across browsers and are slower than other locating methods. Built-in locators, on the other hand, are like well-built bridges. They can adapt to changes without collapsing. The beauty of this built-in locator is that it targets the element based on the link text, not some internal CSS path or XPath. So, as long as the link text stays the same, the locator will work even if the underlying HTML structure changes. Element handles can cause unexpected behavior. Element handle represents an in-page DOM element and can be created with the dollar method. They're like taking a snapshot of an element at a specific time. If that element changes, the handle might still point to the old version, causing issues. The key difference between locator and element handle is that element handle points to a specific element, while locator captures the logic of how to find an element. If an element's text changes or a React component renders a different element, the handle still points to the old DOM element. This code snippet shows the difference. The dollar method locates the element only once, but the built-in locator is smarter. It checks for the element every time it's used, ensuring it finds the latest version even if the element updates. In this case, that means it locates twice, which is correct behavior. Imagine you have a page with seven buttons and you locate them using an index, like in this code. If a developer adds another button at the beginning of the page, you'll have to update all your locators. Using built-in locators avoids this problem, as your test script will still work fine even with the new button. Ditch the manual locator writing, why? Think of it this way, you're only seeing one line of code when you write locators by hand, Code generators, on the other hand, analyze the entire HTML page, that means the locators are always unique. Alright, enough doom and gloom about bad locators, let's shift gears and explore some best practices. We'll cover two key things, installing the Playwright VS Code extension and mastering the art of picking locators. The key to rock-solid locators, code generators. These tools analyze the entire page and pick locators that are less likely to break with changes. They're like having a team of expert locators working for you. Now that we've conquered locator picking, let's jump into recording tests. You can pause whenever needed, and resume by placing your cursor where you want to continue, and hitting record at cursor.
Here are some built-in locators you should be using most of the time. These guys are awesome because they come with built-in waiting and retry features, making your tests more reliable. Alright folks that's it for locators, got any questions or locator war stories, hit the comments below, if you found this helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more test automation wisdom, thanks for tuning in.